Hello, this is Jax. Hi, Jax. This is Kimberly on behalf of Curtis Armstrong. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Um, I have the other line. Are you all set? I am. I'm ready. Okay, perfect. We need to merge the call. Hang on one moment. Thank you. Jax? Yes? Hi, do you want Curtis Armstrong? Okay, thank you very much, Kimberly. Hi. Hi, Curtis. How are you? I'm good. How are you, Jack? I'm good. I'm so thankful that you gave me this time uh, to talk to you a little bit today uh, for the Providence sure. Area and Motif Magazine. Oh, my pleasure. Um, so, uh, originally we wanted to, to talk about maybe your experiences in Providence and Rhode Island Comic Con um, in general, but now learning about your sure. uh, learning about your new book, um, I've read a little... Well, there, yeah, yeah there's, there is to some extent, you know, I mean, I've been to the uh, Rhode Island Comic Con once mm -hmm. uh, before this, and, um, you know, there, it, 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 the, these things now happen all over the country. And there is a sameness to them uh, because basically you never wind up getting out of the building. You right. know? I mean, you show up and you're there and then you go back to the hotel and that's the end of it. Um, however, there is one thing about, about Rhode Island Comic Con I found when I was here the one time was that it, because of its location, uh, a lot of these places are out by airports and things. Mm -hmm. But because of Rhode Island, uh, Comic Con's uh, the, the uh, place where they they hold it. You can actually go out and wander around and get a sense of the city, um, which is what I did last time I was here, where we go out for breakfast or just you know before we had to you know before I had to show up to do whatever whatever it was I was doing. Um, and you do get a sense because it's it's in the city. You get a sense of the city. And for somebody from Los Angeles, it's, you know, I, I spent a lot of years on the East Coast and, um, and in New England uh, generally. And even though I didn't spend that much time here, it just does give you a definite sense of place. And, uh, and it has that sort of, you know, 19th late 19th century feel to it that you can still you can still get which you definitely can't when you're in Los Angeles so there's a there's you know still uh, although these things tend to be very similar there are things that are different and also there was personally for me as a as a book nerd which is what the book is about in a lot of ways um, one of my favorite uh, authors when I was when I was young and still enjoying uh, a lot now was H.P. Lovecraft yes. and so the, you know I before I ever came here I had a sense of what Providence was like through those stories you know which I sort of I sort of interpreted as you know it was always dark and it was always cloudy and rather spooky um, because that was what I was getting from Lovecraft. Um, of course, I now know that it's more than that, but um, that was my first actual connection was through the works of H.P. Lovecraft. Oh, that's actually very wonderful. Uh, Providence does have a very high affinity for H.P. Lovecraft um, and, that, and, his, and his work. Um, so much so that w Motif recently just featured um, Necronomicon, which is a convention oh. bu built around all of H.P. Lovecraft, and it's for his fans. So I highly suggest you, you maybe consider coming to visit us when you're not working and checking I out Necronomicon. Yeah, and I can oh my God. I can sense Kimberly some uh, some articles about it, so you can you can find out more about about the con. Yeah. It just passed, so you have a year to plan now. Okay, uh, that, that, that sounds great. Oh, and that's a hysterical word for it. I love the, the name. <laughs> that's yeah, there, there's a lot of plays on 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 his work. Um, we even have Narragansett has a beer 
um, that I think is HP Lovecraft craft beer. Yeah, I know. I mean, <laughs> you know, so much of it, of course, it's, you know, you know, he was, as a person, not, you know, I mean, obviously he had enormous mental health uh, issues and was, you know, had some very um, problematic um, uh, opinions on things, to say the least. Um, but that was all stuff that I never discovered until much later when I, when I had just, you know, spent years wallowing in these dark, you know, eldritch tales, mm -hmm. as you put it. Um, eldritch beer would be a good, actually, name now that I think about it. It has a Lovecraft connection and it sounds like a regular beer. <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah, it, it was, um, it, it was always fascinating to me as a book collector. The one thing that I regret in my life uh, because I have collected books over many decades of my favorite authors, including Lovecraft. And one of my only real regrets was the day that I sold my Woodhouse, I mean my Woodhouse, my uh, Lovecraft oh, wow. uh, collection. Wow. And I don't know, I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> I need, I guess I needed the money or something because I've regretted it ever since. Uh, I th uh, yeah, so at, at the con, you would have been able to repurchase an original Lovecraft <laughs> or two because there are definitely vendors that had them. But um, that's, that's, you know, that's so sad that you let that piece go. But I'm, I'm sure, you, you know, you still appreciate his work. And from, you know, H oh, yeah. H.P. Lovecraft as an author to you as an author and a book lover, um, I would love uh, to learn more about why, um, you know, why this book came about. And then um, I have read a bunch of reviews and stuff, so I want to talk about some other things that, I, that I've read. <laughs> sure. Um, well, I mean, the, the book came about um, just because, you know, for years um, I've been thinking about, you know, my career, about the different things that I've done back, going back, um, going back to, you know, my professional career, which goes back 40 years now or more. Um, and, you know, uh, you, you tend to, when actors get together just as a group, um, we're always telling stories. And everybody's got good stories about, you know, various points in their career. And, and uh, I had the additional, so I had a lot of, of, of memories that were still pretty fresh. And in addition to that, I have, I just don't throw away things. Mm -hmm. So I had journals, and I had diaries, and I had letters, and documents, and all sorts of things that had sort of gotten thrown into a big trunk that got carried around with me for decades. Mm -hmm. And I was going through the trunk, and I just thought, gosh, there's so much, so much stuff here, and it's so specific. And um, I figured that as a nerd, which I've always considered myself to be even before that word was actually used to define us. Mm -hmm. um, I thought that, you know, the idea of writing a nerd narrative, the, you know, a sort of, a, you know, a nerd's progress, uh, born a nerd in Detroit, raised a nerd, you know, uh, that has always been a part of who I am. And, um, and then, you know, to wind up becoming famous because I happened to become an actor and become um, best known for playing a nerd. Um, you know, I, I just thought it would be, you know, handy. And then there is that connection with, well, with Rhode Island Comic Con, with all of them, really, was realizing that I was, you know, I, I was coming and in 1984 with, with Revenge of the Nerds, uh, it was really at the same time when nerd culture as a thing um, was coming into full bloom. It had, it had existed um, before that, but it was, it, it, for various reasons, it was really becoming a force to be reckoned with uh, in the mid-80s. Right. And that was really where, you know, all of the... the, the the 
parts fit into into place. And um, I just started writing, um, and it seemed like it was something that people liked. I handed it around to a few people, and then an agent read it and liked it. And so from that time on, it just ran its course. So, so when did you start that process of of clean, you know, going through the trunk and thinking like, okay, I'm I'm gonna do something with this. Maybe four years okay. it took from the very beginning, from the very beginning through the writing process, and then the last year was the editing and uh, you know all of the the attendant stuff that you have to do when you write and publish a book. Right. Um, so I, it was around four years. Like so, so you you know you have this book um, and it's just taking parts of your life because you know as as a, a grown adult you have you you know I I've read that you have and you you stated that you have journals and diaries and just like entries of stuff that you've been amassing your whole life um, so it's kind of like you're your own Metatron or scribe you know. <laughs> You're, yeah. You know, you're you're like a you're like a scribe of a nerd, and it's a specific nerd because it's Curtis Armstrong, the nerd. Right. So yeah, like that. And you know, it was it was it was a funny coincidence actually because I was working on on the book at the same time that I got the role of Metatron. Oh yeah. On Supernatural. Oh wow. So you know, it was I would be up there, you know, in. Vancouver and um, playing the scribe of God and then you know going home at night and working on the book and then uh, the the uh, I guess it was the um, the penultimate episode of of Metatron's um, uh, which was called Don't Call Me Shirley mm -hmm. uh, in which Metatron faces off against uh, God and winds up pleading with God not to uh, to destroy his creations um, and God has written his autobiography and wants Metatron to, <laughs> to punch it up right. I mean, it was it was bizarre how because it was at that very time that I had gone into the editing process <laughs> and so I would go to work during the day playing <laughs> Metatron editing God's book, and then at the end of the night, I would go home and be still in the process of editing my book. Yeah. Okay. So it was it was kind of an unusual coincidence. I I think that's a that's a clear reminder that God's just like us, and he needs some editing done. T you know, sometimes too. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> yeah, to say the least. Um, but uh, no, so that's amazing because, like, you know, so. So you're you're a lover of books. You're, you're you know you've been reading books your whole life. You've been writing all this stuff down, and now and now you have this book. Um, and in this book, you know you I've heard tell stories in a way that doesn't make it gossipy, which is very hard to do. And I applaud you for that. And um, you yeah. know it just it's just telling it because you know what? If the people who experience these stories don't tell them. How will we find them, you know? Well, it's true. I mean, it was, you know, there were, when I was first in the process, actually, um, of sort of developing what the book was going to be, I actually had had interest from a number of different publishing houses. And um, one of them I, I had a meeting with. And the uh, publisher, or the editor I was talking to, said, you know, uh, I think she'd read my whole outline and so forth, which was the whole Megilla, and she said, um, I think it would be better if you just made this a time frame uh, tell-all. It should start with your first movie and end with, uh, at the end of the 80s, with the cancellation of Moonlighting. <clears throat> so that would take into account Risky Business, Revenge of the Nerds, mm -hmm. Better Off Dead, you know, and Moonlighting, the big ones from that decade. Mm -hmm. But it should be a tell-all book. I mean, you know, you worked with all these famous people, you should <clears throat> you should be able to uh, do that, and it would be, that would be what it would be. And that was never the intention. 
and I would certainly never have limited myself in that way, and would never have really considered uh, revealing things. Um, you know, the, the stories that I tell about famous people are only new to people because they either weren't around at the time and didn't read about it, uh, or, you know, this was just a, uh, 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 you're hearing it first time through someone else's eyes, right. as opposed to seeing it in block print in a, you know, in a you know people magazine or something mm-hmm. so that was that was the way that i approached it was you know I, I i always wind up talking about these movies and tv shows because obviously that's the thing that most people respond to however my idea always had been this is a nerd's progress this is a nerd story and part of that story a huge part of that story involves making movies and tv shows Mm-hmm. That's the hook. Obviously, most people are not going to buy this book because they want to hear about my childhood in Switzerland. Mm-hmm. But it's you know that it's all part of the same story. Yeah. And um, yeah. It, it's be, you know it's the story of the yeah the making of a nerd the and to and the rise to exactly where we are with technology and the nerd fandom right as, as a whole which is why there's like king of the nerd you know so it's it is it, exactly yeah yeah I, I i see i see why you did that and uh and it's it's great i really look forward to reading it um because i have heard you like speak in interviews that I've watched online and now talking to you, um, but from the reviews I've read, uh, it's it's the way that you speak. It's laugh out loud, funny, and I just look forward to you know ha- having my roommate go, "Why are you giggling?" and and then tell him like, "Oh, you're gonna you're gonna read this next." <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you. I hope you enjoy it. Um, so um, I'm trying to think of other questions. Are you excited about coming back to Rhode Island now that we've had this conversation? <laughs> oh yeah, no, no. I was already looking forward to coming back to, to Rhode Island. Like I like I say, you know, it's one of those uh, places where you can slip out a little bit and you know wander around, um, uh, and uh, and also this one is going to be in particular. Uh, significant because we're having the biggest uh, Revenge of the Nerds reunion. Oh yes, um, that, that we have uh, have ever had. Oh yeah, we had one major one before, uh, which was in Louisville. Mm-hmm. Um, but at Rhode Island, we're going to be having um, a huge for us collection of of the actors who were in Revenge of the Nerds all together again. Um, well, it, and we'll be doing panels and we'll be doing the usual things, photo ops and so on. And um, it's going to be great to have everybody together. Um, we always have a good time whenever we get together. So uh, I'm really looking forward to that. And I will be also uh, uh, signing and um uh, and selling the book as well. Oh, yeah. So, well, can I can I make a recommendation then? If you if you do go out um, with all the nerds, there is a Japanese style karaoke at the Boombox, which is in the back of the Dean Hotel, directly like across from the convention center. And uh, uh-huh. if you guys are into <laughs> are into Japanese style karaoke, where you get your own private room and you can do any songs you want. <laughs> Um, well, uh, I will. I will definitely bring it up as possibility. Um, but there's yeah, and there's there's arcade bars in Providence. Providence is very nerdy and cr- and um, creative in that. Well, the mayor calls it the creative capital of the U.S., which I don't know if that's legal or not. But that's what the mayor has been. Well, it's certainly it's certainly legal to say it, but <laughs> it's not. But I do know. I mean, I know. You know, even back. Back when I was living in New York, when I was during my stage days, uh, I used to come up to Providence back then because I had friends who worked at Trinity Rep. Oh, okay. So it was, you know, that was, I never worked there, unfortunately, but I had friends did. So mm-hmm. 
I would come up periodically to see shows there. Um, you know, again, that's going back a very long way, and, and things have changed. Um, but uh, but all from the best, from what I've heard. Yeah. So yeah, basically that area that surrounds the convention center and the and the Duncan um, is like the the theater area, the trendy area, and we have a, a great organization called AS220 that is a non-profit arts community that provides housing for artists as well as theaters and stages oh, wow. for them to continue to work on their art and grow. And, it, and the, the organization itself has grown because they, they bought one of, the, um, one of the, the nude bars that closed down and they're renovating it. <laughs> So, wow. yeah, so, so Providence is, is, is uh, pretty amazing. I'm from New York originally, and I live just, like, right outside of Providence and love it. Um, haven't left. I've been here four years now. Um, yeah. But, but uh, we are definitely looking forward to having you. I'm looking forward to meeting you. I will, I will come into your line uh, and introduce oh, myself please please in person. Come. Um, yeah. And and now yeah. and the, and the whole uh, bi you know big reunion of the um, Revenge of the Nerds. So it, now that you guys are like looking forward to this and anticipating, is there like a big group text going around where everyone's chatting about stuff, or are you guys? We're starting. Yeah, yeah, we're starting to get together with it. I mean, I'm still in touch with with almost all of them. Um, in fact, I interviewed. Um, a, a number of them uh, for my book um, so that you get their perspective of oh, what's cool. going on during the Nerds movies as well. Uh, but Bobby Carradine I see all the time. Um, and I've been hearing from Julie Montgomery who played Betty Childs. I've been hearing from Don Gibb who played Ogre. He's going to be there. Um, Brian who is Takashi. Lamar. Lily B. Scott. Mm -hmm. uh, Wormser is coming up from New York mm -hmm. uh, and who so you know a lot of us are getting together and in fact for the first time we're going to have Ted McGinley there who oh, wow. played the evil bad um, uh, jock uh, so you know we've got uh, we, you know we've got a, a fair number of them only one or two are on it to make it so we're really excited yeah that's going to be great um, and uh you know, Rhode Island Comic Con, it, it's always, it's a beast. You know, they call it the biggest show in the smallest state. Um, and mm -hmm. and the, the number of people, I think it just shows, um, you know, how many people can be so passionate, passionate about a specific, you know, world that, you know, an author or artist created, you know, including... Um, all the people who worked on Revenge of the Nerds, um, not just the actors, but, you know, the writers, directors, producers, and stagehands and everything. So, I, you know, I love, I love conventions. Um, I love all nerd culture. Right now, I'm, I'm wearing, like, a Big Bang Theory t-shirt and an X-Men sweater talking to you. <laughs> so, so what are your, um, what are, what are some of your new favorite nerd fandoms? Uh, well, I, you know, I, I'm still pretty much stuck in my old fandoms. Oh, really? I, 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 you know, I don't have, I, when we were doing King of the Nerds, Robert uh, Carradine and I, um, we, we were discovering all sorts of things which we had never gotten into before. Um, you know, we, we sort of knew what cosplay was, but it was that show that really introduced us to all of its, you know, its intricacies and and so on. And so there's there's lots of stuff. But but by this time, you know, I I tend to be the you know to sort of dance with the one I brung, mm -hmm. um, which is you know for me I tend to be a classic uh, um, classic horror film nerd, meaning like 30s and 40s. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, music, music uh, nerd, um, and uh, and uh, a, a book nerd, a book collector. Mm -hmm. Those are the those are the things. Even though I've you know I've sampled, and of course, as a result of doing these events, I wind up being introduced by to to new things all the time. And certainly, the supernatural fandom mm -hmm. is you know a phenomenal, unique. 
Yes. Experience. <laughs> um, but uh, but basically, those are you know the things that I always loved are the things that I still love. Uh-huh. So that you know it it tends to be books, music, and movies. Okay. Um, so, so nothing new. Do you think there's a, there's a divide between, uh, old nerds and new nerds? Like, well, cause obviously, I hope not. well, well, I, I, when I say divide, I guess it's because now there's just so much content. So a kid who's only 15 now, you know, trying to catch up on, you know, years and decades worth of, of, uh, you know, content, it would just be, be crazy. Oh. Well, I don't think that, the, I, I think the average kid mm-hmm. wouldn't. I, you know, I think that the nerd culture is something that's become so vast and has so many elements to it and is so, uh, there are so many different types of it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's come such a long way, you know, from, you know, going to comic book uh, um, sales in, you know, church basements, which was sort of what I remember from the 60s. Mm-hmm. All of this kind of, uh, all of these kinds of things are, are exploding, mm-hmm. and I think that new nerds coming up may get interested in the old school type fandoms, mm-hmm. um, uh, or they may not. Maybe they, you know, just have you know uh, their own uh, new exciting fandoms. The technology changes constantly. Mm-hmm. The references change com- constantly. So, you know. Uh, DC and Marvel were omnipresent when I was a boy, but mm. only within the pages of a comic book. Right now, okay. you know, with the movies and the TV shows, that's an entirely different fandom. Mm-hmm. I mean, it can include the comic books, but it doesn't necessarily. Right. And so, all of the things keep changing, and people keep, you know, fandoms evolve uh, over time. And, you know, whatever happens to the new Star Trek, for example, Star Trek Discovery, Mm -hmm. uh, I I have no idea whether that's going to go or not, or, you know, whether it's going to be a, whether it's going to be a worthy uh, 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 connection to the traditional uh, Star Trek fandom, or whether it's going to just be an asterisk. Uh, I I don't really know. It's too early to say. But (laughs) that's the way, that's one of the ways in which things evolving right and you you can't really expect any 15 year old to absorb you know 60 years of different fandoms because there's really no need to yeah no truly um so we are at the end of my half hour that i requested and i truly appreciate all the time you've given me and all the answers you've given me to my questions um well, I really enjoyed talking to you. Yes, I enjoyed talking to you as well. Um, this was a great experience for me. If you have any questions um, for me in the future, uh, Kimberly has all of my information. Um, I will let her know as soon as this is in print, um, which okay. I don't know when the next deadline is, but I know we, we, do, we do issues every two, every two weeks, and so we're putting them in leading up to the event in November. Um, and so, and so you will be the first one featured. Um, so thank you very, very much. I can't wait to read your book and I hope you have a wonderful Friday and a great weekend. Uh, Thank you very much, Jax. Take care. Thank you. Bye.